Hey guys, this is Bert from Chunk New Captain Chunk, and I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. It's so exciting that another album is just around the corner, and I'm super excited to be talking to you and talking about it. Uh, let's jump in and talk about um, pretty much like that that gap between that third album and this upcoming new album, uh, Gone Are the Good Days, and how much of a challenge did you find yourself as far as the writing process goes to create this record? Oh, yeah, well, first, I think, I think I should clear things up for a lot of people who, you know, really didn't, who got like confused by us being away for quite a while um, and so the story was that after Warp Tour 2016 we were supposed to you know go back home and write that you know fourth album and that's exactly what we did we took some time we sat down and we started writing songs um, the thing is we I don't know at that time we had like our expectations were like very very high and we really wanted to create something new, something fresh. And the thing is, we're, like, the thing what that people, a lot of people need to understand is that uh, at that time, we were like some sort of an, on a constant roll when we were not on tour, we were in the studio. And it was like always like back and forth. And we did not really um, take a break um, before that. So the thing is, we started, we sat down, we started writing songs. And the thing is, after three months of like experimentation and, and songwriting, we're like, you know what? Like, it's, you know, it's not good enough. Like the, the vibe is not there. Like it were, we were not like quite satisfied with like pretty much everything we, we had done at this point. Um, so we were like, you know what? Um, let's take a break. Let's, uh, you know, let's take, let's, you know, maybe what we need to do is maybe get back to normal life for, for a minute and then we'll get back, uh, at it. And, uh, and yeah. And what, what happened next was that, um, I think everybody kind of like stepped back a little bit and, uh, in the band and with the, that, that happens, we, we actually got back at it. Uh, we started with a few songs and, you know, we, a few songs became an EP and an EP became an album. So, so, so yeah. And, and to be, to be honest, like the, the, the kind of like really, really helped. I think without this album would be, I don't know, maybe would be kind of different. Um, the thing is, what really make, made a difference on that record is that we had time. We had time to actually process our ideas, to actually uh, question ourselves about, like, you know, where we wanted to go, what kind of sound we wanted to do. Um, and I think that album, as it is right now, is kind of like the result of all that thinking uh behind it that's so true like you guys were constantly either on the road or like in the studio um and that burnout must have been insane but as far as like burning out how did you how did you how were you okay with the fact that okay maybe it is time to to take this little break to kind of focus on ourselves and re like refocus on the band so we can create music just because i feel like when you're in that kind of momentum it's so hard to stop I understand. I understand. But I don't know, like, um, you know, I feel like when I think of like each of our records, previous records, like I think we each of, of those records, like for each of those records, we had like a very specific songwriting process. I mean, for like for our second album, pardon my French, like when we arrived in the studio, we knew exactly what we wanted. Like the the like the pre-productions were like so finalized already that you know we just the guy had, had just just to press to press record record and you know that was yeah we were like very ready for that one. Um, we actually on that third on the third album, Get Lost, Find Yourself. We actually it was a, like kind of like the opposite. We 
arrived in the studio not so prepared on purpose to see what kind of magic could have happened. And I think for that one, it's kind of like we we don't, I mean, we didn't know exactly what we wanted to do at first, but the only thing we knew was that we wanted to make like an awesome record, you know, like a great record that sounds fresh, that sounds new. And the thing also that a lot of people need to realize that for a band in our niche genre, it's really hard to, um, you know, come up with something fresh, something that sounds interesting, you know, because I would, I would have hated if, you know, just making a part of my French number two or, you know, um, and I think, I think it's, you know, us being an artist, uh, yeah, being artists and having that kind of thinking and processing about, like I said, like, what do we want to do? Where do we want to go? And further than that, it can be also like, how do we want to do it? Like, I mean, like technically, like how are we gonna, um, how we want to, yeah, make it sound or, or of that. And the cool thing about this record too, is that it's, all self-produced you know like we did everything uh ourselves and i think that's that's you know that's something we can be very proud of is because like the songwriting the the, the mixing the recording everything has been you know uh crafted exactly and me very meticulously exactly the way we wanted it to be so yeah yeah <laughs> The fact that it was self-produced, how would you say that uh, your previous records with Joey Sturgis and Kyle Black kind of prepped you to do this again? Because I know you guys uh, self-produced your debut album also, but after, you know, having the experience with these producers, how did that kind of impact this new album? Well, the funny thing is that uh, I think we, all of our experiences in the studio with like other producers have been amazing, you know, We're, like we learned so much from those. And if you look at you know the kind of sound and the kind of approach that these two producers had on our on our record like like they're kind of like the opposite one is like very um um metal and very like precise and it sounds like very polished and powerful while the other one is more like raw sounding but also more um i don't know it it has some sort of a extra uh life to it uh if that makes sense um so i think this album where we on this album we kind of like wanted to you know take the best out of the, out of those two approaches uh and yeah make it our own but yeah the truth is like all the sessions have been like we learned so much i mean like not, not and not just about the technical aspect of like music production that's also the kind of way you can the yeah the, the kind of look you can have on your own music um and i think being your own producer can be good but it can be also very tricky especially when you're you don't have much experience because uh, you can be way more confident on stuff that you, where you should not be so confident if that makes sense in saying that how would you say that you were able to challenge yourself vocally uh, during the recording process. Yeah, that's that's also one of those things I'm very proud of uh, this record because like I pushed my myself like to the limits. Uh, I kind of like wanted to know and wanted to see how um, how yeah how I can push uh, my vocal cords kind of. Because you know, I've always done some kind of like extreme stuff with my voice, going like those like very like like low screams, very powerful, and go back to like that very poppy singing. Uh, but besides those two aspects of my voice, I kind of like never took like much risks in terms of like um, scale keys and yeah. I, I mean, we. It's kind of like one of my regrets when uh, I look at our previous album is that I I, I feel like I didn't really took um, take enough time to experiment with different keys, and um, we have a lot of songs that's kind of like always in the same key, which kind of like make it make it all, make all all of the song kind of repetitive at some point. So 
this album, like, I think all of the tracks are like in different keys, which allows me vocal, like vocal wise to do like, yeah, to expand what, um, what I can do. Uh, which means that, you know, if I want to make sure to, to hit a, a certain note and make sure that I kind of like trigger that extra grit on my voice, you know, like I can actually do that. I have control uh, on this. And this, that was one of those things that was kind of like very interesting for me to, to try and to experiment. And um, I'm, ve- I'm actually very grateful that we actually took the time to do all of that. But same goes with the guitars. Like um, we experimented with like an A string guitar just to see what kind of uh, tone uh, it will like give to the record. Um, and yeah, I don't know. We did, we did like a lot of crazy things, but in the end, what matters is like how the song kind of like feels. Um, and, uh, and I'm very glad that um, all of those little experiments actually worked out very well. Was there a particular song that really challenged you, especially with to me was complete you uh because you threw me off at the end with the saxophone which was a brilliant idea what kind of inspired that and at the same time i was like did kenny g just feature on chunk <laughs> on chunk's record <laughs> yeah uh so yeah that song okay that's i have to say this is like this is probably my favorite on the record um and okay there's like a little story on that song um this started out out of like a, a like an ex, kind of like an experimental like we were we sat down we were like okay let's let's do something like insane like like the craziest combination of sounds that we've ever done and this song started with like like a simple like afro beat like 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 that and we all we started to blend like a like uh, yeah, like funky tunes and indie indie stuff. Like, but you know, if if you uh, on the paper, um, it it sounds like it's almost impossible to make it work uh, on a chunk song. Um, but I don't know. This combination at the end worked out so well, and and uh, and yeah, it worked out like. I don't know. We were like so amazed how well it worked that in the end we were like, you know what? Let's let's take it even further with like a crazy and bring in a, a crazy uh, crazy instrument that no one will expect. And we're like, okay, let's go with the saxophone. Um, and yeah, I'm very glad how this this song uh, turned out. I think it's one of the. I I, I really can't wait um, to get like the people's feedback on this thing because it has a very specific um vibe to it uh and honestly like it it kind of like opens some doors and opportunities for a fifth record like because i don't know it it we'll see we'll see but i'm i'm just so glad how it worked when was this song in particular uh written was it written closer to the end of the album cycle or the album process or was this one of the early songs it's kind of like one of those early songs but you know like kind of like that pre-production you're you're doing but you're you know you're kind of pushing it a little too far you know so there was like a very there, there was one very very early version of that song that was like okay that was extreme like that was tip like that was not even like chunk or or anything um but yeah like progressively we um we kind of like blended some like chunk chunky <laughs> elements to it um but yeah pretty pretty early in the process actually 
throughout this entire process of the writing process uh, or even the recording process, what would you say was the biggest challenge for the band, um, whether it was a, a song in particular or just certain things that you were trying in the studio? Um, I think besides the, the, um, the songwriting, um, I think there was a very, yeah, there was a technical challenge. Well, we already talked about, you know, my vocal range, uh, which I tried to, you know, expand as much as I could. Um, but I think it's also, yeah, the guitars, um, it's been, it's been kind of like complicated to make everything work because we wanted that like huge wall of sound uh, on every choruses and there's like like if you listen to like if you solo some tracks there's like a lot of we cheated a little bit on like few elements but yeah that i think that's why the the eight string guitar made made sense um it's always been combined with like uh, like a Stratocaster, a Stratocaster guitar or Jazz Master, which is like instruments that we've never used in the past. I think, um, but I think we we kind of like uh, inserted those elements just because we, we felt like it was needed. But yeah, having that wall of sound on pretty much all of the songs are was pretty challenging. Um, uh, same goes with the drums. The drums were like. Um, yeah, we wanted this to be very punchy, but also sound real, you know? Um, yeah, everything has been kind of like a technical challenge in a way. Um, I'm just glad that, uh, everything worked. The thing is, the problem is that we took some, like, we took so much time in the studio crafting that sp very specific process for each song that now we have to focus on like how we're going to play this live. And uh, yeah, I'm, I, honestly, like we just started thinking about it and starting to like um, set up like a yeah, like like a, a, like a solution for to to make it work like on stage. But yeah, this 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 will be a little tough. <laughs> well, I mean, I've been listening to I listened to it yesterday, the album, and um, I'm really enjoying every single track on this record. So I can't wait for everyone else to hear it on July 30th. But uh, Bert, thank you so much for taking the time and congratulations with this record. And for everyone out there, uh, Gone Are the Good Old Days or Gone Are the Good Days is out good July day. 30th on Fearless Records. So thanks for hanging thank out. Thank you, man. man. Thank you very much. Thank you for, for having me. And uh, yeah.